Well, I'm, I am currently living in Mi'kmaq um, near Halifax or Chibuktuk. And I am an associate professor at NASCAD University. Uh, so I'm an educator and an artist and somehow sometimes manage to find time to do both of those things with, with great joy and pleasure. Um, but I am originally from the Midwest. I'm a, I'm a rural Midwesterner from the US and that still feels very much a part of, of who I am and who I like how, how I think about making images even. Um, so, so yeah, being rural and having this, uh, a background, especially in manual labor, um, is, yeah, it's always a sort of a, a seed in my, in my brain or a theme that kind of runs through, through my work. Uh, and I make, I make prints, I should mention, maybe that's obvious, I'm not sure, but, uh, I'm a printmaker and, uh, that, that means that, yeah, I, I have a variety of different interfaces and technology um, and a variety of, of, I guess, different platforms from which to think about making graphic work. Um, and I use, you know, different procedures, different methods for different, um, yeah, different types of work. Um, well, I draw a lot and that, that often gets left at the wayside when I talk about uh, my work because printmaking often takes over because it's so much either more kind of alluring to people because most folks don't make prints or people don't know what it is. So I spend a lot of time talking about that. Um, but I, I'd be remiss not to mention that, yeah, I, I, I draw. I'm a mark maker, image maker, drawer. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I think that's, that is somehow... I don't know, since I was young, that was a really important part of how I processed information or processed my worldview or um, something I found in enjoy, enjoying. And I, I, I think that it's one of the only things that keeps me still, sitting still for a really long period of time, which I will be honest is, uh, I think still a really important part of, of why I make work. It's, it's pretty self-serving, but... Um, I like driving for that reason too. I like to drive because it's one of the only things where like, that's all I'm supposed to be doing. Like, that's it. I'm not on my phone. I'm not listening to, you know, listening to the folks on the phone. I'm just driving. Anyway, um, so drawing is, is kind of core, but I do a lot of work to kind of prepare for that. There's always this, this really heavy, is research or gathering component to, to the work that I do. So before I begin, um, I'm, I'm, perhaps I start with a, a specific event in history that I wanna know more about, that, I, that, that holds something for me. Um, so I'll spend days, weeks, months, researching, reading, gathering um, information, ideas, quotes, and I'll start to churn that into um, some specific designs. So I did a lot of design work um, on the computer with uh, Adobe products, Photoshop and Illustrator. Um, and then that gets translated into a drawing often. And then, um, and then that gets translated into these different printmaking processes. So there's all kinds of variations of that, but there are definitely these, these different stages and iterations. And I find that a lot of them, um, yeah, they, they, they involve very different mindsets, very different, um, yeah, states of being, states of mind. Uh, and some are much more enjoyable than others, but um, I, it's bizarre that with this, this um, exhibition that is at the Kelowna Art Gallery, there's very, very little drawing involved. It's actually the first exhibition or body of work that I've done independently where there's very little drawing. So the inspiration definitely comes from a desire to, um, to make and to make with my hands. I, I definitely get excited by seeing the work of other people or, or being around other people who make things with their hands. Like that more than anything um, reminds me why I got into this game in the first place. It reminds me of that little sparkle or that fire that um, um, gets me into the studio where I can kind of detach a bit, which is this wonderful luxury that I have to be able to, to tune off and to just focus on one thing. Um, is an absolute gift, but but in inspiration also I think the the sort of core 
a core theme that runs through a, a lot of my work of the last 10 years is this, this interest in, um, in the visual propaganda of like the 19th and 20th century, like largely Western propaganda created by the nation state. Uh, um, and and the, the vocab like the textual based or the um, language based propaganda as well. Um, the, the words, the speeches, the public service announcements, the memorial plaques that, that sought to tell my ancestors and myself what, what it means to be American or Canadian or what, what our purpose here is, what's our grand narrative. That's, that language and that rhetoric is, is really inspiring and horrifying to me. And those are you know kind of part and parcel of the same thing. <laughs> um, yeah, that's what inspires me. If, there's a couple answers to that. Um, and, and one of them is I got so tired of myself. Uh, when I do demonstrations for students or when I work with my students in printmaking, I'm constantly trying to push some of them to do like, hey, you know, look at this white ink on this white paper and look at this subtle grays together. Isn't this beautiful? I'm, I'm constantly uh, bestowing the virtues of, of subtle work and finding myself often most attracted to um, to very subtle, light, um, ethereal, airy work. And and my, you know, my those posters that you're you're referencing have been a part, a staple of my art practice since like 2009. Um, they're just, yeah, they're so much who I am and what my my visual vernacular is. So it is a big transition, but it's also been a bit of a side project for a while. It's the those prints that are featured in the exhibition began, some of them began many years ago as a response to these, these side commissions that, that I'd be given. Um, and, and I started really enjoying them and finding that they were really cheeky and sometimes kind of smart and, and um, and, and because of the pandemic and the fact that in the, the place where I make my work, the studio is, is at NASCAD. Um, and we can only have a certain amount of people in the building at, at a time. I didn't think reliably that I could finish the body of work that I wanted to make. So I thought, well, hey, I've got, I'm sitting on this idea that I love and I can travel across Nova Scotia and take rubbings of plaques, you know, to my heart's content. So, um that's what I yeah that's how that came together um long story short or this is the, the simplified version is um there is a, a federal website where I can locate the um the text that is on all of the the federal federally funded heritage plaques in Nova Scotia. So I can access that text. So I, I isolated hundreds of little words and phrases. Um, and then instead of keeping them all on my computer and trying to sort out like the phrases I wanted to use that way, I printed them out onto paper and cut them. Like there, it had to be this physical en engagement for me. And it very much is like, um, uh, like the fridge magnet poetry thing that, that we often see. So I, I had this row of favorites. Um, there were probably about 20 of them that just were phrases like a decaying fort and a lack of guidance. And, and these were phrases that I knew that no matter how, what they got paired with, I don't know where they, how are they gonna show up, but I love them. They, they, they sing to me as just encapsulating so much of that, that pompous and, and magniloquent language of plaques. Anyway. Um, and I, and I often involve my partner in uh, some of my decisions, like especially if I get really stuck, I'm like, come up here, should, you know, should I use this one or should I use this one? And I think with the show title too, um, even before it was a, a question, um, he pointed to that one and said, that's gotta be the show title right there. Um, I thought, oh, you're so silly, that's too cheeky or that's, you know, um, that's ridiculous but it's ridiculous and it's perfect because it's ridiculous. <laughs> it, it's, but it's also, I, I think it's interesting too because so much of the, the language that I'm reading so frequently is um, kind of puffed up or trumped up and, and very celebratory and very uh, positive. And every once in a while though, there are those moments where uh, I think one of the pieces in the show says, um, there's a phrase, the enterprise, 
uh, utterly failed. And it's not something you often see. It's there's a humility in a, in a sort of, yeah, I think there's glimpses of humility that I'm very attracted to that I think ought to make their way into how we talk about history a little bit more. When I picture people in the, in the exhibition, um, you know, looking at the work, I do, I think my, my most basic sort of hope is that they get a little chuckle, which is, is different than my, my ambitions or my desires for the, that poster work you referred to earlier. Um, but uh, I think that in, in, the, ah, in, my, in my most exceedingly hopeful moments, I, I would love if viewers could imagine a scenario or two where history unfolded in a very different way um, or, or where somebody else was telling the story instead of the usual suspects. Um, yes, what if, what if Western development on this continent happened very differently or happened much later or, or just unfolded in a completely unexpected way? Um, or I, yeah, I'd like it too. Maybe if folks imagined a different kind of um, memorial text where, where the language is a bit more humble, less biased. Um, and yeah, just, just had a different, a different more open um, interpretation of the events that have transpired. And you see a little bit of that. I actually, um, and I feel foolish for not knowing what department is responsible for it, but um, I've driven across the Western chunk of this continent a number of times. Uh, and in a recent trip, I think it was actually on my way from um, Southern BC back to Nova Scotia, I drove through the States um, through North Dakota and the plaques that were there told a very different story. You, you could tell they were quite new and were replacing the, you know, the grand narratives about, you know, about Custer and Western expansion and blah, blah, blah. And it was the resting. It was absolutely stunning to see the landscape spread out before you and then to read about the tragedies that had unfolded um, and to be left with questions. That's something that art, art ought to do, but hey, why not also, you know, the text that is, is aiming to teach us about uh, the most subjective part of our, our humanity, it's what has transpired already.